All right, welcome to episode number eight of On the King's Dime. It is Wednesday the 7th. Uh, it is two days after we took on Melbourne. That was on Monday night. Uh, we're here to round, uh, wrap up round four, which was a home win against the Illawarra Hawks and then a tough away loss against Melbourne. Uh, just got some things to plug first. Shout out to everyone on Facebook and on YouTube for listening, uh, like, share, and subscribe right now if you're listening on YouTube. And uh, you can find all of our podcasts on YouTube. And if you want to queue them up for later, you can find them on iTunes and on Pod Addict, Podcast Addict. Yeah, any RSS-based podcasting yes. app should have our podcast. Uh, also, you can find Aussie's Taking Over the NBA, which is our other NBA-based podcast. You can find that on SoundCloud, on YouTube, and on also your RSS feeder, as Andy just said. And iTunes. And shout out to everyone who is listening. We're getting some good feedback, which is good. Uh, it's good to hear the Kings are doing pretty well. Um, they started this season, and they were, I think they were two and they were two and three when they started this, and they beat Illawarra, and now then they were three and three. Yeah. to take on Melbourne and now we're sitting at three and four. So not not the best start to the season. Not the best start for supposedly the best lineup ever put together. But Well, well who's saying that? That's what that is what the commentators are saying apparently. Um that this is the strongest lineup a te- yeah, I know. Yeah. I think it's just bogus. <laughs> it's just like we've just well, got yeah. an awesome ex uh number yeah. one draft pick, so it is the strongest lineup. But yeah, a lot of good hype around Bogut. He's he's started the season really well. I yeah, think he's I done think pretty well. He is uh defensively a mm. defensive player of the year already. I Grabbing think. boards, yeah. doing it all. Blocking um, shots. I think he yeah, he's got the record now five or five or six games with three or more blocks a game. I think that's an NBL record, which that's obviously one thing you're gonna be expecting. Andrew Berger to come into the league, he's going to be blocking a lot of shots and grabbing boards. Um, I didn't really expect him to be scoring a lot. I would have been quite happy for him to be scoring, you know, five or six points a game, getting a lot of assists, but he, he's doing it all. And against the the Hawks, I should say, uh, sorry, against the Breakers originally, he had a great game in New Zealand. And then we got that win, obviously, at home in overtime. And then obviously now the Hawks... We've got another victory, and we're going to go through some of that right now. Indeed, we are. And um, look, the Hawks just deserve to lose this game. I anyone who plays full court press should not be playing basketball. I hate. <laughs> I was going to drop an f bomb, but I hate full court press. It is the most ugly way to play basketball, and you deserve to lose in any team who plays it. But uh, we played really well first quarter, twenty-seven twelve. Bogut was just magnificent this whole entire yeah, game. Some phenomenal. of the dribbling behind the back going around dunking yeah he had a he had an awesome block which le- then led to that cross up behind the back dunk two hand that was massive he just and had then, all over ogilvy it was just yeah uh, it was kind of like a personal duel and he wanted to sort of because I, I think ogilvy was the best shot blocker last year and he kind of wanted to you know lay down a marker put yeah. a stamp on the game and yeah, Ogilvy, I don't think played very well for the Hawks, but I don't think the Hawks played very well in general. The Hawks are a team that seem to struggle to find open shots beyond the arc and tend to want to get into the paint or around about that 15 to 17 foot to take a shot. Mm. And I think when you're looking at where the NBA and some of the NBL teams are going, they're just putting up threes um, and early on in the shot clock in order to kind of improve pace uh pace of play yep. and be getting more scoring efforts but uh Wollongong seems to be stuck in like a four or last year to, to four years ago NBL cycle where all right it's full court press yeah um we're gonna you know get into the paint we're gonna bang down low we're gonna you know uh try and get to the line and um it didn't really work for them first quarter no so Kevin Lish he opened the scoring <laughs> with a three after some good hustle on the boards from Bogut a uh, nice strong set um, I noted there. <laughs> uh, and then, There's a lot of sighing for me about Andrew Gaze. If he sits on the sideline one more time, stands on the sideline and flexes his biceps and says, strong boys, strong, it, <laughs> I'm going to poke his eyes out. Like, it's just, <laughs> I can understand why they roll their eyes at him sometimes. He he looks like a, an ADHD child who's not getting his way. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, well, we'll get into some of the bogut, co- uh, the um, gays coaching or the bogut coaching because you know who's. I think uh, maybe maybe it is a bit of bogut coaching because yeah. there certainly isn't any plays that I can see uh, in this form. <laughs> but anyway. So yeah, then um, newly hit Lish under the bucket, back door for a nice lane. It was it was some good crisp crisp ball movement. Um, poor old David Weir, he bricked two threes out of the gate, oh. uh, and then he missed a cutting uncontested layup. Oh, contested layup, and then he like horribly bricked another three just after that, and he um, started zero and four. Um, I wonder. I'm sort of thinking maybe we sort of switch the lineup up. Uh, I he just shouldn't be starting at this well, I point. Think, yeah, I think you got you want you want to start kick it for that outside shot yeah. early on when you when you got a good pace of play and you got mm. fast guards early in the game, and he was wide open for all those shots. Uh, I where, think two of yeah two of the threes he was wide open, and then one was semi contested, but it yeah. wasn't like a like you know in your face. But two of them were in the shots corner. where a set shot where you you expect someone to knock that down yeah. if you're getting that kind of wide open look. Uh, newly hit a nice three from the corner off an offensive rebound um, off one of those wear threes. And then in ter- transition, of course, Jerome Randall was dangerous. Doesn't up- newly shot look like a hungry, hungry hippo spinning a ball out? That's like- weird. Have you seen his free throw yeah, stroke? It's, just it's, like, like- it's like he's squeezing the ball between his hands and it kind of pops out and goes into the... <laughs> it's <laughs> like a the snake. Yeah. A snake strike. But it's the first time I saw it, him taking a free throw. Like You saw everyone come off the line expecting him to shoot it. And then he, then it like snaps his wrist and then go like the shot goes up. But everyone's expecting him to shoot the shot, but he, he puts his arm all the way up and then snaps his wrist. Yeah. And everyone's already like expecting the shot and in the paint already. Um, but yeah, we led uh, against the Hawks fourteen four, and we forced them into an early timeout, which we you know we, we got rolling. I thought we started that game really good with defense leading to offense and that's that's kind of how we've got to play yeah like we've obviously got the premier shot blocker in the team in bogut and if he's defending the rim we've obviously got to get defensive stops and push the ball in transition and get to the other end as quickly as we possibly can because that's that's got to be our style well that's it and when you've got undersized guards that are fast and dangerous in transition especially randall um and even to extent leash yeah you really want to be getting quick boards and pumping up the floor and not playing the slow game because it mm. seems to be when we play the slow game, we just weave from side to side. No one's really facing the rim, and then we rely. All right, we've got nothing here. We're just going to rely on Randall to try and create something out of nothing. Yeah, and you know that's that's about a forty percent success rate. So we really need to be doing something better. Yeah, so even early it- on when we're scoring, you don't really see like plays being set. You see Bogut handling at the elbow, handling at the the line. And, you know, getting guys into somewhat open shots with a high screen. But it just seems to me that our wings are just sitting there. Yeah. They're not really, you know, focused on, you know, cutting. Preseason, all we saw was dang, dang, Brian Bowen is cut baseline cutting. Yeah. I haven't seen any of that mid-season. Well, Dang hasn't whatsoever. played much minutes. No, and but he should I mean, be. even Adnam and Randall and Leash, if those three are on the floor, like I, I said in the last episode, they've got a screen for each other, and that's one thing I notice is they don't like Leash will set screens for other guys, but I yeah. notice Adnam doesn't really screen for people, and Randall doesn't really no. screen all that much. Um, the first thing I would be telling these guys is to make sure you're setting your screens and setting them properly because yeah. that's the first thing that's going to get guys open. Obviously, you're not going to have to tell Kick It, Bogut, or Newly that because they, they actually screen quite well. Where's a little bit yeah, here and there? But they're the things that are going to get the, our smaller guys open. Like They're things that the forwards need to do to get our, our smaller guys open and give them a bit of space, um, especially Randall. I mean, Randall's so dangerous in the open court, like even in our half. Yeah. That... The more you screen for him, the the further open he's going to get, and the yeah. more chance he has of getting to the rim. And then um, kick it coming off the bench, got a n- nice post up set, which I heard in the the break. It was called Phoenix, like gays just yelling Phoenix, <laughs> Phoenix, and it just didn't look like anything. And then suddenly kick it was just posting up, and he he got a bucket. And I was trying to look at the set and go, right, okay, I've heard Phoenix. I want to see what this Phoenix set is. And I just, okay, that didn't look like anything. That looked like, like all right, just kick it in the kicker. And then kick it ended up posting up and getting a bucket, which was all right, I guess. Like, I'm still trying to work out some of these gay sets. You know what I'm saying? It's it's hard to sort of understand. 
Um, Bowen, he came into the game immediately getting to the line and helping on the boards. I think one of the other things, our rebounding is not very good apart from Bogut and then kick it when he's on the floor. Uh, Ware's not rebounding very well and the other only other guy that really seems to be able to grab boards is Bowen. Yeah. And that's a huge problem in general if we're playing lineups with either without Bogut or just with Bogut and no strong power forward. Like that's where... Yeah, you don't have well, that second rebounder, and you can't have Bogut hunting the paint because well, we're not we're not we're not getting any second chance looks. It's kind of like shot up. Bogut's Bogut's either at the elbow at the three mm. point line, and shots being put up. There's no chance for offensive rebounds. Yeah, and you're right. No one's really rebounding well. Oh, Pino, I think we need to get Danga Kuth in for a look. I think Pino mm. has shown. Not a lot. Nah, not very much. That's just not a lot. Um, I don't know if that's because he's trying to play in set or that's what he's been told to do, but he's got no offensive capabilities that we can see of this year. Yep. Um, his board grabbing is better than most, but not great. And he doesn't really get banged down low in the paint. So what, no. are, you, what are you doing taking minutes away from a rim protector like Denga Kuth? Yep. I mean, it may be not polished on the offensive end, but his length should give you that ability like Bogut to to mm. protect the rim, protect yeah. the paint. If you're playing zone especially, it's like, yeah. you know, why would you get a guy who is maybe a little bit bigger and stronger on the offensive rebound but can't really protect the rim? Mm. So for me, it's like it's about a combination. You want Bogut protecting the rim, grabbing boards, and then you want another big body like spacing guys out, like that's a, that's something in the last two games I've noticed. We don't have that com- combination. Well, that we should just be David Ware, and he doesn't do that. Well, Ware doesn't really do it. It's it's mainly been kick it when kick it's come in to create um, a bit of hustle. Like he's had to do it, and that's where we've had a little bit more success. But if he's not starting, obviously, it doesn't seem to be a concerted effort to have one guy grabbing boards and blocking shots, and one guy spacing the the floor in the paint, putting a body in front of someone and boxing guys out. Yeah. Um, but then Kyle Adnam, he came off the bench and we saw Wilson for the first time, which was pretty good. He got a couple of minutes against Illawarra. Yeah. Um, still must be nursing that injury some, on some restricted yeah. minutes. I still, it's the lineups that just some, they confuse me a little bit, yeah. to be honest. I, I don't know where Pano is getting seven minutes from. Yeah. And, you know, I understand why Adnam's not getting many minutes, but he's very efficient when he's on the board. Yeah. When he's, on, when he's on deck, he is extremely efficient. Nine points from 10 minutes and least 12 points from 32 minutes. So, yeah. better shooting. He's he's a quicker. He gets the line a lot more, I'm noticing, than, than a lot of the other guys as well. Um, but, yeah, I, I just don't see how where, you know, Bowen's only getting 14 minutes when really you could almost take the minutes away from Pano and give those to Bowen in, in, in the center position. Yeah. He's a forward, in, but... He's better, I suppose, as a more athletic body grabbing offensive rebounds, uh, a more athletic body to work in transition. Because Kicker can't work in transition. No. Once he once he's he plays the five because Pano's been off or, or you know, Bogut's off, once he plays the five, he's essentially stuck down that end of the court because he's yeah. not fast enough to get up in transition. And you've essentially knocked your, one of your best three-point shooters out. Yeah. And that's where Bowen potentially can come in. He is quick enough in transition to take that ball up and to run a play for kick it or even to run a play for himself. Yeah. And he's not a fall on the ball either. He's actually got some pretty good handles for a big dude and a young dude. I just don't see what Gaze has constructed for this yeah, team. Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm trying to see, like, when you look at Illawarra, okay, they've all got their positions. You can see what they're trying to do. Yeah. I don't see what Sydney's trying to do. Well, the problem, like you're saying, with giving Bowen minutes at a, at a at forward or a center, is he's our biggest guard as well. At the same time, like he's yeah. our tallest guard, and if you want a guy to guard on the perimeter, you know what I mean. Like you're stuck. You you can't bring out um, Adnan. You can't bring out Randall. You can't bring out Lish because they're all undersized. And then Wilson's the other tall guy. He's six four. I think Bowen's six six or six seven. Yeah, six seven. I think. But even then, he's a 19-year-old, and that's just you know, like you, you're taking the good with the bad with him. You can't. Yeah. The other thing in the first quarter, we had a lot of transition options and fast transition. Like we had a Bogut rebound, a six seconds to where score, like where miss 
Then we had Randall, a, a rebound from a Bogut block, um, four seconds coast to coast, and it's a bucket. Yeah. And then you got a Bogut steal, and then a wear defensive rebound, and Randall scores in two seconds. Like it, li- it was listed yeah. as two seconds he got from coast to coast and scored. So that's where we've got to punish teams with our defensive ability, like blocking shots, getting steals. Um, I felt like we did that really well against Illawarra, but we just didn't do it at all against Melbourne. Well, uh, another thing to think of as well is that when Ra- when Randall is not on offensively, he's such a liability defensively. Yeah. So he's really got to be on. And if he's not on and he's getting exploited because he can't really fire through screens, and I think Boga has been very, very uh, annoyed that he just won't fire through screens. I think he tried a little bit more in the Melbourne game to do that. Yeah. But if he's not on off- offensively and he's having a crap night, it's just too much of a liability defensively. You need to get yeah. someone like a Bowen in there to be the number two to Lish, who's a bit bigger and can work with a defensive body. But Randall's too small. Yeah, well, that's... I mean, you've got to deal with those limitations. I mean, he's, I think, 5'11", Adnam 6'1", and then Wilson 6'4". They're just the limitations you've got to deal with. I mean, Randall's handles are really good. Um, he's very good in transition and coast-to-coast, and you've just got to deal with it on the defensive end. That's where, if you're gays, you've got to start sort of constructing some lineups that work to negate these things, some combinations, yeah. that down-low combination, playing Bowen a little bit more to sort of guard the, the opponent's sort of outside perimeter threat that's a little bit bigger. I just, yeah, he just doesn't seem to do it, which is it's just sort of strange. Um, but Bogut, he also had that towering block in the second quarter. I was stared down Ogilvy. That was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that well, was pretty yeah. good, yeah. Um, and then Lish scoring again and then they they tried that bogut lob play again like we've only seen that i think twice yeah in the first five games and that they blew that it's like if they blow that play they don't want to bring it out anymore and for me it's like you could run that four or five times a game regardless and you'll you hit 60 percent, and Easy. you're probably gonna connect on a couple and then maybe if you blow it who cares you run it yeah. again you just keep running it like Strong, 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 but strong boys, because strong. Bogut's so good at slipping that screen high, up high yeah, and, and just getting to the rim. And every the rim. time, all you need to do is get it over the, the defender. It's just got to be an accurate pass. And he's, yeah. you know, seven foot. So most guys, he'll be over most guys and, you know, blown past them anyway to to get it. But um, it's one of those things that we still lack in seeing. And I don't know if it's because the NBL is only 28 games. Mm. If you were in an NBA lineup, this is the kind of things you'd almost expect to see halfway through the season going into the, the the back end of the season is these little combinations working. Yeah. And it's almost like because this so games are so limited, we're just not really getting that sense of there's progression. Mm. Just kind of like, oh, what can we do to win tonight, boys? Oh, go strong. Go yeah, strong. Yeah. Phoenix. 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 Um, I, it's it's the shorter game too. Like It almost feels like this, t- this is a 48-minute team. Um, the the roster's constructed for a 48-minute game. Yeah. The way, you know, you've got Bogut, who's more of a patient type of a player, um, not a fast bang down, like a running transition type player. Then you've got some really good small fast guards who could create things. Like, it's almost like there's not enough time. Like, I sometimes I felt like I was looking up at the clock and going, wow, there's only a minute to go in the quarter and it's, you know, it's 12-8. And you're thinking... Oh, wow. It's like, where did that whole quarter go? That was kind of weird. Like, you, you break it down to only having maybe 11 or 12 possessions in a quarter. And you just it just doesn't feel like there's enough of a rhythm and a flow to yeah. the game. Um, but obviously, that's... That's just FIBA NBL rules. NBL and NBA, that's different. I mean, years and years of watching NBA is... Well, we a, used to be 48-minute quarters in Australia. We used yeah. to be NBA rules, but we decided to go down the FIBA pathway, which I think, as a spectacle, um, is, is less... It's a less yeah. product than there's a re, there's a reason why basketball is premier in America. Mm. Not only the talent pool, but the actual spectacle of how they play the game. And I think we need to learn that in Australia, if we want to be on the same lines as America uh, and the NBA, we need to almost adopt their system. But it's the only sport where I agree you you adopt you adopt the best league in the world. Yeah, um, and I think this is one thing that we we shouldn't be adopting FIBA rules. Uh, in this respect and it makes for a more exciting game yeah like you know there's more transitions the threes are deeper um you're setting more plays the floor is bigger so you're able to spread the floor a bit more and a lot of these guys might be used to playing that spread for it just seems we get to a point where it's just bunched 
Like yeah. everyone's just in somewhere in someone's face and the ball's scrappy. Yeah. And no shots are going down and it's a full court press. It's just like... Ugh. Yeah. But I thought, anyway, but like... That Illawarra game, we we came out in that first quarter because we came out with the right frame of mind. In the first four games, I think we were down by fair, like I think seven or eight. We were down by at least seven or eight in all of the games early. Yeah, I think maybe the New Zealand game we started well, but it was it was obvious that we've got to start fast and get into a rhythm and get moving, and we did that against Illawarra, and we got far enough ahead so that the game felt like. It was always um, in somewhat of a control. Yeah, we were in control. I, I didn't really feel like we were absolutely in total control in that first half. Like, I wasn't sitting there going, this game's over. Like, some NBA games where you watch them and you go, oh, yeah, this game's over. Like, they're yeah. out by 20. It's, it's over. Like, yeah. this team's not going to um, drop the ball here. Yeah. But the end of that first half, I felt like, oh, that was – it just devolved into, like, this sloppy mess. There were turnovers, um, just silly, like, really bad turnovers. Not yeah. – um, hands in the lane or ooh, that was a nice deal like just no, tossing just Randall, the ball away Randall slipping over yeah and, and yeah. throwing the ball away so I felt it tainted our first half a little bit in that Illawarra game and then I was kind of sitting there going geez like you want to come out and really push the game again to show that hey hey we're, we're over these errors we'll we'll push the game again but we came out pretty sloppy um, Boga was fouled a couple of times and then he got a, uh, a big block, with, which led to a newly three in transition, which was pretty good. Pretty A couple of pretty dodgy stretches in the third quarter. But I felt like we had him at arm's length. Yeah. But it was not because we were playing well. It was because Illawarra just couldn't score. Like They were just yeah, struggling. Just, they, they weren't shooting it well from outside the arc. And, you know, when you're getting blocked a fair bit in the paint, they kind of moved back to that. 12 to 17 feet. And so mm. that, that's kind of the range that's not really the, known for its most accurate. But Bogut was working well down low. Ogilvy wasn't really getting... He had seven points for the night, was pretty much neutralized. Um, and so they had to you know do something else. Yeah. And uh, they opened up a bit more in the scoring front in the second half. Yeah. And we're getting Illawarra, more of that. Yeah, about. they were yeah. getting more of that kind of 17-foot jumpers yeah. going. And... Um, able to move through and transition and one thing they started doing was really clamping down randall and lish getting out of their own half yeah and it led to like some silly turnovers just like why is david Ware all the way down the other when they continually like three or four guys would be in the half court pressing Mm. two guys yeah like where is the screens where is the getting randall to at least over the halfway mark so you can set your play. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, I'm just down the other end. Yeah. Or where's the quick, like, toss out, like I'm standing in acres of space yeah. in the opponent's half. It just seems, you know, there's some little fundamental things that, like, some sloppy stuff that creeps into our game if we take our eye off the ball. Um, you know, they brought the lead back to 13 in that third quarter. But we took the last shot and we got got it back to 15. And I still felt like it's not enough of a lead. Like if Illawarra catches fire like they did in the previous game, we were, like I always felt like this Sydney team's got a, a bad stretch of um, play, in, yeah. play in them. Like it just feels like they've got a, just a stretch of bad play and we don't have that spurt of 10, 12 points. Like really, like we had it in the first quarter, but it doesn't never feels like once the game's in rhythm, once the game's going... This team doesn't have like a, a a stop and a bucket, a stop, a bucket, a stop, a bucket in it. Yeah. Like that real rhythm play, like it just doesn't feel like. So we, we got into the fourth quarter. I think we were leading by 18. Um, Dane Pinnow, a, a really, actually really good screen he set. And then Kyle Adnam dribbled through. Pinnow cut to the bucket, was like wide open and Adnam whipped this sweet pass in between two defenders to him, mm. wide open at the bucket. And it felt like that was one of the only times in the game where, oh, like we executed something that got someone basically a wide open look at the rim. Yeah, yeah. And it just made me sort of think, wow, we really don't do a lot of that. Like a really a lot of, oh, we've we've handled out at the elbow or we've brought out someone, run someone off the screen and he's wide open. I'll hit that guy. He's wide open. Bang. Like it just feels like we don't create these things. Like you're talking about no. the weave out up top. Even that feels like it's way too far outside the three-point line. Like we, yeah. should, we need to be getting closer to that three-point line, and when, when we do that, actually hitting guys with screens, like yeah. making sure we hit them, we seem to just 
standard. Oh, look like we're screening. Yeah. Look like you're like, no, no, no. You got to screen the guy. You got to actually hit the guy. That's yeah. the whole point of doing that. Like running guys and tiring them out, making them run into you. Like that's the whole point, not sort of faking it. Um, so Illawarra didn't score in that stretch until 554. We had the lead to 20 and that, um, that made the lead 18 for us. And then we just went completely cold. Like, uh, here, I'll read it out. So, a turnover, which was a kick at travel, Lishbrick to jumper. Um, <laughs> then Penau had that lay in for the score, which made it 20 again. Um, Bowen hit one of two from the line. Adnam from a dribble handoff. Bogut rims, rim runs, and they miss it. From there, there's a Randall turnover, a bad pass. Newly bricks a three. Lish bricks a two. Bogut bricks a two. And you just thinking like can we just put the ball in like we're taking these wild shots yeah. like bad shots um well look you can flip you can flip side of this illawarra defended very well for the last 10 minutes last mm. quarter they they locked everything down and they played some good hard ball but in saying that if you guys like randall or leash this is the perfect time for the big man to screen to open you up for transition mm. this is the time where you can actually get some you know fast buckets by going coast to coast because you've got two men screening for you. Yeah. Whereas Bogut was the only one that looked like, okay, I'll hang down here and mm. wait to screen someone so you can get across. Yeah. It was just like, all right, we're, we're set on our corners. Please enter yeah, our yeah, half court. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not how it works in full court. Yeah. Like you've got to come down and you have to screen three times before you get over the halfway line and then you set your play. But that didn't happen. Nah, so... With 4.58 to go, they led by, we led by 19. So, it was a seven-point game in the end. And, you know, in under five minutes, they've cut the lead to seven, basically, by the end of the game. Kick it, bricked a three, botched a layup, bricked another three. Um, then Boga made a layup to make it 17. Then um, Randall turned it over. Adnan bricks a three. Um, there was an eight-second violation. Like, this is bad fundamental yeah, stuff. Yeah, I like, know. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Backcourt. The backward vibe, they couldn't get out of the backward. Yeah, yeah. Because there was no one <laughs> sitting. Ho- but this horrible. is what I mean. Yeah. And then another Randall turnover, which was a steal. Um, inbound, Bogut, bad inbound to the back of yeah. Randall, basically. Steal, which cut it to... Like, they could have cut it to four with 20 seconds to go. But they missed that three. That like, was a bad miss. It was a really bad air ball. But from that steal, he had a wide... Like, I think it was... Um, it might have been Ogilvy. It might have been... Blanchfield? I think it was... I think you're... No, I think it was Conklin. No, Conrad. He had a like a wide open basically lane, three dribble, yeah. and he was at the hoop layup. That would have cut it to five. Yeah, but so, yeah, you really need to cut it to four. Otherwise, well, but they still had 36 seconds to go. If he had to just cut straight to the hoop and scored 30 seconds lead at five, the foul play comes into play. Yeah. Then, He's but playing. man, like just bad execution. I'm, I'd, I'd be less worried if they were just putting up shots and oh wow they they've they've caught fire and they've heated but we were just like turning the ball over like really bad fundamental stuff yeah. so i thought in the wash up of that game after the game i was thinking well that's a big wake up call boys like yeah really really some bad stuff down the stretch of that game that you've got to look at make sure you go into this melbourne game really on your on your toes so obviously we went into that melbourne game and out of the gate. Do you want to talk to... We want to go straight on to that Melbourne We'll go straight game? on to the Melbourne... The Melbourne... Um, game without Golding as well. Yeah, without you? Golding. Look, Melbourne didn't play well, man. Like, they didn't play well at all. And part of me is annoyed because we didn't beat them. Like, part of me is going, we should have won that game. But part of me is going, man, they were terrible. Like, they played terrible. We we played well in patches, little, little bits here and there. But at the same time, I'm not that upset. Like, there was a fair bit of outcry on facebook about it like yeah few threads and i think yeah the, the where overstatement uh um, and even some people saying newly like what's newly even add to this team and i mean he he looks shook like he missed those i think he missed four on the night but he missed those two free throws like really early on yeah and i was like mate are you shook like you're a veteran like what, what's going on here mate like you've been here before like well, what's what's happening um but we again we started well like we started that game out the gate Obviously, they missed their first four. We missed our first four. Um, but we had some good looks. Like, Ware had another really good wide open look that he's got knocked down. Then he missed a dunk, like, badly. Like, <laughs> if you, you need us in a situation where you need to score, 
probably should lay that in. But I understand him going up for the dunk. Like you want to you want to throw down a dunk early yeah, in the that's... game, get your team fired up. Um. So like we started well. Like it was, it could have been an eight point lead, right? And then them going into a timeout. But really, it was us not scoring. And then I think they were um, eleven to. I think it was eleven to two, and they called a timeout. Yeah. It's just it was one of those games that was marred by poor scoring as a whole mm. between both teams. Both teams, yeah, yeah. Were just woeful. Um, some shocking refing. Oh man, like. Yeah, I don't want to. It's it's not about like being salty about the rest. Rant but away, rant away. The like, like refereeing where the referees just let start letting things go at the starts of games. Like really, really disrupts the way we play. Like the motion type play, transition yeah. type play, really pushing off stops. But then they'll suddenly just start calling fouls, and you're just like, no, hang on, hang on. You you started the game letting a lot of things go, yeah. So you kind of stay consistent. You don't just then just start calling crazy fouls here and there. And Melbourne, man, they flop a lot. Like I think I counted all four of them: uh, Ware, McCarran, um, Moller, and then there was somebody else, like throwing themselves on the ground, like like literally just throwing themselves to the floor trying to get fouls. And I'm going. Why? Like, it's the NBL. Like, why are you flopping? Yes, this is maybe terrible. they're taking a good old leaf out of old Golding's book. And there was... He does enjoy a flop. Bogut on a... Like, a, Boone got a foul early, and I think he got a second foul really early. And then there was a sequence where I think Newley was just, like, smacked on the head by Boone at the rim. They didn't call it. Then Weir grabbed a rebound, tried to put the shot back up, and he was clearly fouled, and they didn't call it. I just kind of felt like... Oh, they didn't want to give this guy three fouls and have him taken out of the game early because of Bogut. Like yeah. it just felt like it was a strange, strangely a ref game. Then sort of later on down the stretch of the game, Gaze is talking to the refs like, um, "Oh, he he obviously didn't see it." And then like they show you the replay and the guy's standing right there, like looking straight at it. <laughs> and you're just thinking, "Why? Why didn't you call that?" He clearly just put his elbow straight out into Bogut's face, and Bogut went down, like. What? That didn't even make sense. And he's arguing with him. And then the ref goes, no, no, I didn't make a decision. And Gaze is like, no, you just did. You just told me you did, like he didn't see it. So how's that not making a decision? The guy's like, look, no, look, no, no. And I'm just thinking the refs have got to control the game. And if you want to control the game, you've got to be consistent and start calling well, when, when the way you want to When it comes to elbows, to they should always be double checked for flagrancy. Yeah. If you get an elbow in the face, all right, it's an accident. But it's it, the potential for a flagrant one. Mm. You need to go back and check that. Yeah. That should be stopped. That should be, uh, you know, passage play stopped. Go over and check the dart. All right, it's not a flagrant. It was just, but it's still a foul. And this is where I think the NBA does it really well. And it's what makes the game what it is, is that there are stops in play where the refs go, shit, we don't know what's going on. Let's mm. check it. And it becomes a definite more flowing and fair game in that respect because... If it's just a normal foul, it's a normal foul, and they call it that. Yeah, it, yeah. It, you know, it's nothing major, but it seems like the NBL is like, oh, we don't want to stop the game. We're just yeah. going to call fouls, or it's we like, want to control the game. Yeah, and then it just becomes, no, 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 you're being really inconsistent here. Like you can't let things go, and then suddenly decide, oh, we want to control the game. Like you got to control it from the start and stop things from escalating. Then you control the game. Like you don't let things get out of hand and then go, oh, now we're going to control yeah, it. Like we, it. got you, out of you, hand. You know, like, you can ax people, but then halfway through the second quarter, oh, we don't want that anymore. We're just going to start calling yeah, it. Well, you've set precedent. Like people yeah. expect the fact that I can hit set a hard screen and I'm not going to get called. And it sounds like I'm being real salty, but I, I'm tying it back in with it really disrupts the way we play. Like a lot of motion, a lot of screening, a lot yeah. of ball movement. Um, you know, we didn't, we obviously had Bogut playing center. We struggled to put that combination of the boards, um, the combination of the extra forward on the boards, which was what was getting them a lot of excellent second chance looks, crashing the glass. And yeah. then suddenly Bowen comes in, gets like this really like soft over the back call. And I'm thinking to myself, there's been like four offensive boards where they've just flown in and clattered people. Yeah. And now he comes in and gets this soft offensive foul. Like what? That doesn't make sense at all. And then he had foul trouble during the whole game. Like, yeah. I think he was on four fouls pretty early in the first half. And he's our impact player. Like, he's the guy we bring in and he's our impact scorer. I think DJ Kennedy took it, took it on himself to try and take him to school, which, you know, fair enough. Um, 
he kind of took, I think he cooked Panau a couple of times and then he cooked Kick it once a bit later on down. He, he played quite well, like very yeah. efficient, solid, a um, couple of, you know, a couple of flops. But Yeah, that's just to be expected really. I felt like um, we just didn't have the, the scorer and big guy. Uh, sorry, didn't have the rim protector and big guy combo, which was allowing them to just get on the offensive boards, get yeah. in. A lot of dump offs at the rim, like Bogut's there to look at look at blocking shots. The guy just dumps it off, and you you don't have the spacing to stop that from happening, or you don't have the second guy coming over rotating and getting a, a block on that guy. Yeah, Melbourne had ten offensive boards in total, which is well, extremely high. According to NBL, it was twelve. And I went back and looked at because they don't do second chance points on this. Ah, okay, yeah. So I went back and looked. They only got six second chance points. And then I think we had 14, no, 13 I, I listed. And um, like a few of them, there's newly put back miss, um, kick it, <laughs> rebound, and then traveled. Um, Bogut misses a put back, kick it, misses a put back, <laughs> a team rebound that Adnan misses a three, like not making sure these boards count. Yeah. Like if you were to look to that and thought, oh, wow, each team um, got – the same amount of boards, basically offensive boards. You would have thought, oh, you know, well competitive, but we didn't crash the glass at all. Um, it was mainly Bogut getting these. Um, whereas Melbourne making concerted effort to crush the glass, especially away from Bogut, like sealing Bogut from his defensive duties, and then getting in there to get that board yeah. and making sure to get in the way of our guys and get second chance point chance points. Um, I thought Barlow played pretty well. They they kind of got really physical too, which I feel like our team doesn't respond to like if a team starts to get physical with us we kind of uh, don't don't yeah i think there's well there's you're a bit undersized in that respect well yeah which is um, which is understandable um i feel like bogus the only one that really gets like yeah, yeah well, right, the you want to be physical sure let's be physical yeah. and then kick it gets a little bit but i mean kick it is older and he can get a little bit out of control and he can get a bit elbowy <laughs> fa- fouly, yeah yeah i didn't want to didn't want to open Get a bit up elbow any um, yeah, boomers' yeah. wounds, <laughs> um, but all in all, I thought like we we played well in the first half in these patches where they were met with some ropey scoring from Melbourne, like Casper Ware in the corner hits this fading, leaning, jumping over Randall, like nothing but net three, and yeah. like you couldn't even see where, like he disappears onto the bench, he's faded out out of court that far to hit it, like. Like you're thinking to yourself, some, some oh, jammy wow, that's, shots, yeah. yeah, a bit jammy. And then Barlow, obviously, he's been shooting quite well. One of the ugliest strokes I've ever seen, basically shooting like this ice cream scoop from about the hip height. <laughs> like it was just, I call it the garbage scoop. Like it was, he was often trailing, found trailing sort of to the three point line and hitting shots. Mitch McCarron hit a couple from about 20, 25 feet where you just think, no, like you can't score from that scores. Like, like, and yeah. the, the, the team doesn't respond to that. They don't look at that and just go, oh, well, whatever. We'll just run back down yeah. court and we'll score. They, they've dropped heads. Like, yeah. Oh, you that's... just think, oh, they're just on the chuck. Like, relax. Like, you don't, need to, you don't yeah. need to respond to that. You just need to keep trying to score at the offensive end. And I felt like even though they didn't play all that well, Kennedy obviously was tidy. But I still think, like, they hit a lot of – a few lucky shots, man. Like, a few – well, sometimes it's just your night. Like, but at you, the perfect time too, like, yeah. oh, we've cut the lead to four. We're looking really good. Oh, bang, bang. Like, oh, like ropey shots. Like, yeah. Home, home court advantage, a little bit of luck and, you know, a seven point win. Mm. And the not, crowd was into it. Like they were into it. And I understand that. Like they were, like, it was a good crowd and they were, they were rolling. And that's where I thought like newly missed those two free throws. And I was like, mate, why are you shook? You're a, you're a veteran. Like how is this affecting you? Kick it missed a, a couple of free throws. Um, I think Melbourne ended up shooting 30, 36% or 37% on the night and still winning. Yeah. Like, but it just shows you what potentially our lack of scoring can do for a game as well. And mm. our lack of, you know, especially in the backup unit is yeah. is the ability to, to get to the rim. Like, you know, when Lish is hitting 15, having that's, I mean, that's a, a solid game. Newly's hitting seven, three from 10. Randall's seven from 18. Bogut four from ten, David Ware two from six, um, and then you know we've got four guys on the bench who didn't score. Wilson yeah. had a minute, Panau had eight minutes with no offensive 
yeah. production. Um, Deng Den had three minutes um, and Bowen scored two points in 30 minutes because they don't set plays for him. He's the kind of guy that you need to get open. It's almost like if you if you set that um, wing pin down for kicker to get him open and he gets chased out, he should be... Bowen should be right next to him for the quick flick off. Yeah. Because he can knock down open three. Yeah. He's probably the only other player except uh, kick it who's tall mm. and can knock down an open three. Yeah. And they just don't. It's nah. just weave, 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 weave. Okay. There's no penetration. Um, Randall here. You somebody, take it from there. Somebody try and create like, a shot. Yeah, here. someone try and create a shot. Bogut come up. Or Bogut gets the shit. He comes up and goes, right, give me the ball. I'll create a screen for Lish to have a bit of a shot. Like, yeah. there's just... So we went to Bogut a little bit, like twice. I think he got stone. Like once he got this weak steal, like right out, right at the start of the game. He kind of tried to turn on Boone, and got pushed out under the basket, and then just got the ball stolen. Like it was weak. Like to me, that's where you, as a player, go. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll wait a little bit and try and facilitate. I won't go back. And then they just went back to him again, and you know, put up a little bit of a raspy hook shot. I think there were two where he airballed like these hook shots. Yeah, and it wasn't working for him. But that's where I sort of go, uh, me myself go, that's not his game. Like, no. don't go back to that. Stop going back to the little bogut hook if that's what they're defending. That's not your defending. Priming, that's if they're not defending your well. Yeah. That's fine. So it's fine that he shot four of ten. Like he didn't didn't have a good night, quote unquote. But yeah. I'm I'm like that's not his thing. Like his thing isn't scoring. scoring. Like it's not what he's meant to be doing. It's it's mainly you're right where none of the other guys really stood up to that um, yeah. to the the hostile environment. Like what did Randall have? Fifteen. I think he hit a couple of clutch threes, a couple of nice mid range. Newly, I expected a little bit more from Newly. I, I wouldn't be calling for. <laughs> Newley's head, I wouldn't call like for his head. <laughs> He's a pretty consistent coast to coast. Um, look, and he missed a couple at the at the line. Like yeah. he missed a couple of um, layups. Like things where like we were sort of saying, oh, if Newley gets anywhere between like two steps in the rim with his body yeah. in the right position, that's a bucket every yeah. time. Missed a couple of those. We we're going to kick it a fair bit in the post as well. Like he had three or four scores where he was backing guys down and just floating and hook shots and. If that's a serviceable option to go to, then that's fair enough. Um, you've got to kind of plan for that. Like you, you wouldn't plan to get kick at a look in the post unless there was a mismatch you could go against. A couple, of, uh, I think there was one bucket where he did that that fake handoff. Yeah, we've got to get that going a little bit yeah. more if we're weaving a little bit and doing the dribble handoff game, fake the handoff and get to the bucket. Um, David Ware, I think he struggled at the start. He missed that dunk. Um, he has really struggled this season. And even in the preseason, he hasn't really looked like he kind of fits into the team or mm. the style of play. Um, I think you expect more service to where he is. and But in that case, you still got to knock down the shot. Yeah. And he's just not knocking it down. Nah, well, he's getting into good positions. I don't... He only grabbed one board in this game. That's a that's a problem. Um, Newly had eight boards. Kigat had seven. When Bogut, 15. If your other forward is not grabbing boards, then, then that's a problem. And I think the the combinations with Bogut have to be that big body and Bogut as the shot blocker or rebound grabber because basically we don't have rebounding guards. Like none of our other guards really rebound all that much. Yeah. Um, Adnan played pretty well off the bench. I thought he gave us a bit of a spark, a couple of decent looks. Um, he's very fast. Like he, he was into it because he's from Melbourne. Um, so he had had a little bit to play for, you know. He came off the bench with a point to prove, put up a couple of nice shots. Um, we had, we had uh, the hilarious mis misdiagnosis of a ding. There was a ding a ding a Kuth's coming off the bench, and it was ding ding. <laughs> <laughs> so it was we had a, a miss uh, ding. I think it was um, Liam Santa Maria on the telecast. A, a misdiagnosis of the dings, <laughs> um, which I thought was pretty funny. Should get all the dings in a room. But I f- still felt like every time we closed. To within Double touching ball, distance, yeah. they just got a jam. Oh, they shot. get to the line. Yeah. Oh, they just hit a ropey shot. Oh, you know they put up ten points and now the leads back to twelve again. Like we've got to find a way to stop that. And I don't. It's that transitional defense as well. Is that when you've got guys like Alicia and Randall, and you're getting to that point where you, you that's the perfect time to pull them off and lock down defensively. Get a big line up on the floor. Uh, get Deng Deng, potentially, you know, put Bowen in the two, 
keep lish, you know you can keep Adnan or Lish at the one and lock down some defense. Mm. Um, and instead of just being, it's it's not just an offensive game. I think really teams that do this quite well, Adelaide does this quite well, is if they're not having a great night shooting, they lock down defensively. And we don't do that. We're just always looking for that next bucket. Yeah. Instead of like, okay, well, now we need to actually just lock this game down. Um, and that'll create opportunities because they'll get frustrated. It just seems like that happens to us. When the other yeah. team isn't having a good game, they just lock us down. And then they go on the run and we're just yeah. like, oh, we don't know what to do. And we're, we're just an offensive team. Well, that's in that Illawarra game, we had a lot of that where defense leads to good offense, basically. Yeah. And Bogut even said in the pregame, like we, we were defending really well. And when we defend well, that's when our offense can get going. And even in a game like against Melbourne, like it's an obvious high level game. That's That's one way to sort of think about it is... They're a high level offense and yeah. a high level defense. So you've got to execute. You know, it's not like an Illawarra where I feel Illawarra played terribly and we just squeaked by them. But at the same time, I didn't feel like we were up for this Melbourne challenge, even no. from the start. Like it just felt like we're going to have to play really well. And we started quite well, we started really intense. You know, we had some good looks at the start. We didn't hit them, but it feels like that just one shot to this team's confidence and that, that's it. Like yeah, it's they, gone. They just go to water. And they've got to build it all back up again. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't know how you fix that. Like, where's an obvious problem? Um, but I've seen him play well and I've seen him do things well. It just feels like... It he, just feels like he doesn't fit into this team. No. Nah, and if, I mean, he's getting good looks. Like, he, he's three or four of the looks in both of these games that he missed were, like, wide open. And it's like, mate, you got to knock these down. Like, you have yeah. to knock if these down. If that's all you do is knock down two of those, then, you know, you're within one point in the Melbourne game mm. and you've blown out Wollongong. And and then the free throws. I mean, we, we missed, what, eight free throws. Like, you, we, yeah. we, we always talk about how... How good the NBL is. The absolute free yeah. throw league. So, we, we put the mocker on it. And then yeah. Bowen's foul trouble. So, going forward... What do we do against Adelaide? Yeah. They've beaten us twice... Uh, Daniel Johnson is obviously an offensive behemoth. They're kind of uh, struggling too, aren't they? I think they're about three and five at the moment. Yeah, they're three and five, but they just send a team to turtle out against the Kings. Sobey yeah. seems to have just games, but maybe we hit Sobey on a bad stretch and we, we get away. Look, I think what we need to do is, again, lock down defensively, put on a bigger lineup. I think we need to have either Bowen or Deng Deng at the two yeah. for parts of the game. If you're bringing out a backup unit, I mean, Tom Wilson's probably not there physically yet, and that's fine. You bring him out as part of the backup and at the two, but you can't have two smalls on at the same time. It just does not work mm. defensively. It's different at the first part of the game when everyone's fresh-legged and Bogut's on top, but when he's tired, you're getting 30 minutes in you know, deep. Yeah. You need to have a big guy at the two to pound the glass to get your second-chance looks. And to get these guys into the game, like there's only 40 minutes, you need to get Deng Deng into the game. That's mm. that's it. You've got a guy who played quite well in the preseason, you know, went off a couple of times with some great shooting. So you know he's got the, the tools and you know he's long. Yeah. So what are you doing not using him effectively in a backup unit, I think? Yeah. Um, and maybe that's taking minutes away from Pinal. Maybe that's taking minutes away from Kickett. But you need to get him involved somehow. Yeah. So I think... Like re- rebounding is obviously a big one that we've got to solve where we've got to find that combination that works in the shot blocker sense and the re- board grabber and mix that guy with someone who can space the floor down low and box out. And David Ware, I was going to call him Travis Ware, David Ware is not doing that. Like it, it feels like kick it comes in and suddenly we have that a little bit. So yeah. I'd almost kind of start kick it now. Like, all right, David Ware, you're going to have to come off the bench play as a hustle guy off the bench yeah um i just don't un- like i don't understand how that mentality works whether where feels like he's the one who should be starting or whether gaze is managing their two egos there somehow because I, I somehow i don't think kick it is that much of an ego on the no. on the floor but i don't know if where has that kind of oh, i have to i demand to be starting or it's like mate you should take a seat on the bench like so maybe he's managing that somehow, but I, I feel like Kickett's got to come in and start and we've got to start the game with that down low combination of defensive, getting those stops, getting back into transition early, taking the game away from the opposition nice and early with good fast transition play. Um, and then we could start to switch it up with maybe bringing in Deng Deng as a shot blocker and then where is the, the extra forward space in the floor? Yeah. 
um, getting Ware off the bench and just scoring maybe, getting his confidence up yeah. and just getting him into the post and scoring. Um, Newly, we've got to run some zipper cut sets for Newly, man, because he's such a good finisher. If he gets his body in the right position at the rim and we're giving the ball to him at the rim, like he finishes every time. Like he struggled a little bit against Melbourne, but got to get his confidence up with some easy buckets. Um, I like Adnam's been playing pretty well. You know, Randall, Lish, Adnam, Wilson. It's a tough, tough sort of combination to work out because of the, cause they're all so undersized. Like, that's that's a yeah. real struggle. Um, I just think maybe screening-wise, we've got to start. Like, where's 6'10"? He doesn't play like a 6'10". No, nah, he doesn't right. play like a forward, does he? It's No. Play, plays more like a small forward or like a combo forward type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, like he's a big dude. He just he just doesn't play to his body, and you know, you expect someone like that to be a menace on the boards and hustle and yeah. But work like, hard. all right, it's not working for you from the three. If you're open, drive. Beep. Yeah, give it a bit. Drive and dunk. You're yeah. six ten. Drive and dunk. You're not getting yeah, the yeah, looks. Yeah, for sure. And he's for not sure. doing that. It's just like, all right, it's up. Okay, all right, I'll just run back to my position. And part of me is like, take the shot. Okay, fair enough. Take yeah. the shot. But you're not making the shot. So have a seat. I, I like that mentality as opposed to trying to restructure the way you play. Like I, I prefer him to just take four wide open threes and maybe miss them and then have a seat rather than, oh, no, I don't want to take the three because maybe I'll miss it. Like, you, you yeah. know, that kind of starts yeah. to creep in. I don't think you like Bowen is, an, is a guy where – all right, pump fake and drive because yeah. I, I feel like he could score at the rim easily at will. And yeah. Newley is another guy who I feel like could score at the rim at will. But the other thing too is we've got to dial up some actual sets, like actual stuff. Like yeah. I've been trying to go through and watch the games and work out what we're trying to run, but it just does It seems to be like a jumble. Like there's probably three or four times where I've seen, oh, right, that's a good set. Like the double yeah. screen, like the kick at Bogut double screen where Bogut slips. And there's a lob on every time. Like, that's a good one. The kick it where he, uh, like, Bowen runs in between two screeners, kind of like yeah. an elevated door, and then kick it comes back around and gets a wide open three. We've run that once. Um, yeah, we just we just don't run a lot of a lot of play. I don't know what Gaze is doing. Maybe, I think he had a good per, uh, preseason run with a lot of games in order to work some basic plays out, but it just doesn't seem to have come to fruition. It just well, seems to be... All right, let's get some Randall Oso. Okay, no, nah, that's not working. All right, Bogut handle at the elbow. Um, set a screen for Lish, and Lish will just try and knock down threes. But uh, it's, it's high level stuff, but not being executed well, and not, yeah. like it doesn't look like they're high level enough to make it work. Like Bogut's so dangerous at the elbow because of how well he can pass. Mm. But if you're not cutting and moving, like he's not going to find you. And if you're not screening properly getting guys open like like setting um baseline pin downs for people to get into the lane and wide open like a few times we saw ding in the um ding ding in the preseason like they set a wide pin down and he'd be just wide open at yeah. the bucket and it'd just be like nice straight in there for him and we haven't seen anyone score like that no. perno has been pretty much the only time really that we've set up that kind of play where the guy slips and he's wide open at the bucket it feels like we need it we like it doesn't feel like a team where we need to score, so run this because that's what yeah. that's how we know we're going to score. Um, it just feels like they, there's, they don't even think about that. Like they're no. not even thinking about it. Um, so I'd like to see us, you know, run a few more sets, less less strong, less strong, um, more action. What, Maybe a what couple did I write here? I wrote flops. Um, ter- the one terror screen was one. I guess that means weave. Um, Spurs down was one, and then Phoenix down. Yeah, and then have I seen them connect? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, boards, screening, getting inside. You're right. It's not can't just be Randall trying to get to the bucket every no. time. Lish Lish has played well, um, but it's so taxing for these small guys, man. Like you got to help them out, screen better, rebound more. Indeed. Um. So Adelaide, what do you reckon? We can win that. In we'll Adelaide? get the win. We'll get the win. I hope so. We'll get the win. Um, we and then will get the win. I think we're three and four now, and then that'll be five hundred. Well, it, it should get us to playoffs, but it's a long season still to go. We've still got yeah. many games, uh, twenty games to go. I don't feel like the hype is matching how we're playing at the moment. The hype, I think Bogue is matching the hype, but the, the team is not matching. The no, hype. and um, high risk, high reward. But so we just yeah. got to be patient. Indeed. 
Should we wrap it? Yep. I think that's a wrap. All right, guys. Um, thanks Saturday. for tuning in. Saturday, 2.50 is the game. Saturday, 2.50 p.m. Early, early tip. I wonder how that affects these guys because we play a lot. I think we play a 2.50 tip on the weekend and then a weeknight is a 7.50 and that's pretty late. I wonder if that what if they're them. just they're, they're more like and then all oh, Adelaide's behind, aren't they? So half an hour. that's a one. Oh, only half an hour. Yeah, it's so only half. a two o'clock tip. Only half an hour. Anyway, yeah. All right, guys. All right, uh, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, remember, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we will be back next week wrapping up the Adelaide game. Yeah. So there's one game, and then I think there's one game next weekend. Yeah. As well, so, so there's only one of one. But um, we'll be here wrapping all the. Uh, action remember if you'd like the nba aussie's taking over the nba is our podcast um also if you want to listen to uh a bogut we did a career wrap on yeah andrew bogut about his time in the nba so you can uh definitely check that out that's yeah i'll our... share that actually i'll share that on facebook yeah share that on facebook a shout out to those guys who are listening to no, we appreciate the support definitely and uh good. we will curb the swearing yeah i'll beat that out don't worry Shit. Man, Gay's Gay's let off a massive. Oh, okay. Gay's loves to swear, but bunch I mean of that just shows like right down the can too, like <laughs> right next to the camera, right down the can. And I thought of old mate. Shout out to old mate who uh, called us out. So cool. All right, guys, Peace. take it easy. See ya.